Hey folks, Larry Wingett here. Today I want to talk to you about two words, two words that can make a lot of difference in how others perceive you and whether they want to do business with you. Two words that can determine whether people will do business with you and the kind of reviews they leave about you, either written and online or the word of mouth that they tell other people. I recently had some plumbing work done here at my house. I moved about a month ago, uh, called a company that I'd been doing business with for many, many years, spent lots of money with. They do heating and air conditioning and plumbing. <clears throat> just bought a new air conditioning unit from them just three weeks ago for this new house that we moved into. Had a few plumbing issues, so I called the plumbing side of the same company. Uh, and when they came out, I had three host bibs and a backflow and they put them in. And I said, by the way, while you're here, We've got this RO system underneath our kitchen sink. Don't really care about it. Don't really want it. Hadn't been serviced in a long, long, long time. How about pulling it out? We'll have more room down there. and We'll be good to go. So he pulls it out, leaves. Next day, big outside, one of the pipes had burst. And so we called them back. Second call. Now, they come back. Pipe. Fix the pipe. And when he leaves, the next day, we don't have any water pressure. Call them back again. I go out and look at the meter in the front. Looks like it's on to me. They say, well, we'll send somebody out. Now we're on to Saturday. Going to send somebody out on Saturday morning. This will be the second callback on the same problem. Second callback, same problem. I'm already tired of this thing. It's supposed to be out on Saturday morning. Call us say it'll be late tonight. We're really covered up. I understand crap like that happens. In the meantime, my landscaper happens to be here, and the landscaper is putting in some new irrigation uh, drip systems out front, and he says, by the way, here's the reason you don't have any water pressure. Uh, they didn't turn your meter all the way back on. I said, it looks like it's on. He goes, yeah, but there's another one over here that they just barely turned on. Well, that's kind of plumbing 101. When you leave somebody's house, make sure the water's turned back on, but he didn't. So we tell the people, don't bother send your plumber out today. My landscaper, turns out he's a better plumber than your plumber is. <clears throat> then that night, we don't have an ice maker. No ice coming out of our ice maker. It took us a couple days to realize it because the tray was full of ice. I mean, the little basket thing. So now we don't have any. It's not making any nut. I get down underneath the sink, look down there. Sure enough, where the little nozzle says ice maker that you turn on and off, he's just clipped the hoses off on both sides, capped them, and left. Now, he didn't tell me when he was unhooking the RO system. He was unhooking an ice maker, so we call him back. Now, we're working on the third trip to come reinstall the ice maker. <clears throat> All right, here they come. Should have been the fourth trip. They didn't make the third trip because my landscaper fixed it. So now we're on all these trips. So the guy comes over to fix the uh, ice maker. He hooks it all back up. He doesn't want to say anything bad about his, his uh, co-worker. So he just says, yeah, maybe he was hot and tired. Okay. So uh, he leaves. And we're in the kitchen. And now we notice that we have water running out from underneath the freezer and our garbage disposal doesn't work. Call them back. Now we're working on four trips. Call them back. Ask for a supervisor because we're frankly done. Four trips in five days, I'm done. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I need a supervisor to call me back. Doesn't happen, doesn't happen. Call in twice more. Finally get a manager to call me back. Manager calls me back. It says, we'll have a supervisor and another plumber back out there tomorrow morning. That would be today, 8 o'clock in the morning. Shows back up. Here they do. They come in. They look underneath. Sure enough, no, yep. Got a problem here with the garbage disposal. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. They feel real proud of themselves for fixing the garbage disposal that they left unhooked when they left. And they look underneath my refrigerator and say, the problem's not a plumbing problem. It's your refrigerator. Now, here's the deal. I just had a brand new ice maker installed in this Sub-Zero upon moving into the house. A brand new ice maker installed, and it's worked perfectly since we've been here until they disconnected it and reconnected it. So, what a coinky dinky What a coincidence that they come out and work on it, and now it doesn't work, but it's not their problem. It's the freezer's problem. Really? Call Sub-Zero. Not on us. I said, guys, I just can't take the coincidence, the irony of the fact that you were here, and now it doesn't work. And until you got here, it all worked fine. And now you're going to ask that I'm upset. I said, listen, are you real proud? I said, super, are you real proud of the work that you've done here? He just looks at me. 
Come on, are you, are you proud of what's happened here? You try, proud of the way we've been treated? No. Let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an I'm sorry. I'm looking for somebody to say, I'm sorry. Those are the two words, folks. I'm sorry. I'm looking for somebody to say, I'm sorry you've had a problem. I'm sorry we're out here for the fourth time. I'm sorry we didn't show the one time we said we would show and didn't make it or it would have been five times. I'm sorry that every time we show up, we leave and more is wrong than when we got here. I'm sorry, Larry, that we've put you out, interrupted your schedule, made you rearrange in order to fit our schedule. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Tell me I'm sorry even when you don't believe it, but see the words, get them out of your mouth. I'm sorry. Show that you respect my time, that you respect the couple of thousand dollars I just spent with you on this plumbing issue, that you respect the tens of thousands of dollars for the three air conditioners I bought from you. Tell me that you're sorry to show me some courtesy, some respect that you care. Please say I'm sorry at some point. He doesn't. He just looks at me and I say, I'm asking you right now as the supervisor, I want you to say the words, I'm sorry you've had a problem. Nope. Continue to look me straight in the eye. Never said the words, I'm sorry. I said, so you're going to leave here today. I still don't have an ice maker. I still have a drip underneath, the, uh, underneath my freezer in there. And you're going to say, not my fault, even though there wasn't a problem before you got here. Yep, that's got nothing to do with us. <clears throat> I'm sick of you. Leave. Watch for your reviews. Now listen, folks, I've never left a bad, believe it or not, I've never left a bad Yelp review, never, never left a bad Google review. I don't leave bad reviews. I write about people in my books. I give speeches and stand on stage and tell customer service stories, but I don't leave bad reviews online. Because I've read a lot of bad reviews. Some of them are written by idiots and they're mad. I mean, I had somebody give me a one-star review on Amazon for my book because Amazon got it there a day late. What's that got to do with the quality of the book? So I know how smart people are sometimes when they leave reviews. So I just don't do it. I leave good reviews when I get great service. I'm quick to do that. When I get bad service, I just move on down the road and I want to do business with you. But this time I did. I went in and left a bad review for Donley Heating and Air Conditioning in Phoenix, Arizona, telling this entire story in great detail and utter fairness, exactly what I wanted to have happen. And the reason I left the bad review is not because I got bad service. That was reason enough, but that's not why I left the bad review. I left the bad review because I didn't get an I'm sorry. Because the company didn't think enough of me as a human being, didn't think enough of my time, didn't respect me, didn't care enough, weren't courteous enough to care about what we went through. And so because they didn't use the two, two words, I'm sorry, I left them a bad review and I'm shooting this video. How often do you have the opportunity to make something you've screwed up right by using the words, I'm sorry? I'm sorry means you're gonna take a little ownership. I'm sorry means that you acknowledge that you made a mistake. I'm sorry shows respect empathy, courtesy. It's the honorable thing to do. And so many people can't make the words come out. Can't say, I'm sorry. They cannot form the words. I asked the guy point blank to his face, are you going to say, I'm sorry? Couldn't do it. We need to be a little quicker to say, I'm sorry, and own the problems, especially problems we cause. And even if you didn't cause the problem, you can be sorry for the problem that was caused that your customer or someone else is going through. Be sorry they're going through the problem they've got. Be a good person. That's what this comes down to. Be a good person who cares about people spending money with you and appreciates the fact they've spent money with you. I'm sorry can make all the difference in the world. All you have to do is fall on the sword, admit that there was a problem, <clears throat> take a little responsibility, and say those two very, very hard words. Now listen, folks, let me tell you. This thing, first world problem. I'm a big boy. There's bigger stuff to worry about than whether Larry's got an ice maker or a drip or all this. I get all that. That's not what this is about. A bigger problem than Larry's ice maker, or your ice maker, or your drip. The bigger problem is that, that we've forgotten how to be good people and own our mistakes. 
and take responsibility. And we don't know how to use the words, I'm sorry, when we should. Hope this has been a great reminder for you. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back. I've got a couple of other things I want to talk to you about soon. It's been a while since I shot a video, so look to hear some more from me pretty quick here. Have a good day.